Kriegen's Dark World presents Chronicles of the Deep and the Sea People's Legacy, Part 1, The Anunnaki, Exodus, and The Awakening. The Anunnaki had departed, leaving behind a fractured earth peppered with technologies arcane and mighty, a legacy enshrined in metallurgy more complex than the greatest human minds could fathom. Their hasty exodus was not a gesture of peace, but one spurred by internal discord and the relentless tug of a war with the Syrians, which beckoned them across the sea of stars. Idi found itself shell-shocked. Their overseers gone, but the memory of subjugation fresh. Minds slowly unraveled from the teetering grip of the amnesiac virus. Thoughts once obscured began to interlace once again into webs of innovation and sentience long lost. Rubble from the Anunnaki's Vamanas, a fleet of celestial chariots that once sliced the sky with divine finesse, dotted the landscape, their burning husks a testament to the final skirmishes that ravaged the heavens before their departure. Peasants and kings alike whispered stories of dragons dueling amidst tempestuous clouds, bolts clashing with fiery maws as if myths themselves had torn through the veil of reality. The war machines lay dormant, their monolithic bodies sprawled across mountains and buried in seas of sand, marred by time and conflict. As humanity's cognitive shackles melted away, the brave and the curious ventured forth, citing the twisted metal remains as lighthouses in their quest for truth and autonomy. Civilizations began to rebuild in the absence of the Anunnaki's helm. First crude, then with burgeoning sophistication, as the scattered remnants of their celestial patrons' devices were unearthed. Humankind's wits sharpened upon these relics, progress born from the very instruments intended for their bondage. The earth hummed with the remnants of advanced machinations. Seers and sages formed cabals around the enigmatic mechanisms, their hands diligently working the alien consoles, deciphering hieroglyphs, aligning crystals, harnessing the vestiges of power left behind. For the first time in an age, humans dreamt not of escape, but of mastery over the destiny that had been promised in the form of metallic salvation. Part 2. The Rise of the God Kin and the Sea People In the wake of the Anunnaki's departure, a new epic surfaced upon the Earth, the Age of Antiquity. As humanity's understanding blossomed like a stubborn weed cracking through the desolate concrete of ignorance, those who claimed lineage from the gods seized the reins of power. These self-styled divines, the godkin, hoarded the age-old scriptures and artifacts, clutching the remnants of lost wisdom with avaricious tenacity. In their hallowed halls and cloistered enclaves, secrets to the universe whispered through the leaves of ancient texts preserved, studied, but shared, not with the common man. The godkin understood that knowledge was akin to the mightiest sword or the most robust fortress. In their grip, the vestiges of Anunnaki and Syrian technology unfurled as a painter's canvas, ripe for authority and dominance over those they deemed lesser. Bronze, once a token of utility, now glistened with the promise of a new age. Below the cerulean waves, explorers of the deep unearthed cities drowned and forgotten, remnants of the progenitor races. Their ruins pulsed with mystique, beckoning those who dared to rethread the path of the Anunnaki's wisdom. The Vikings, fierce and undaunted by the chill grasp of their northern abode, ventured across oceans and time. Their blood spiced with the cosmic genetics of the Syrians, they became the messengers of a bygone narrative, a race reborn from the ashes of the stars to sow the seeds of enlightenment. The Sea People, as they were known, spread far and wide, their dragon-proud ships slicing through the salt and foam to deliver unto distant shores the forgotten chronicles of civilization. 
In Alexandria, a beacon of progress and repository of knowledge, the Grand Library, a fortress of understanding, guarded the immense wealth of words and ideas. Here lay the nexus of man's ascent from the rubble of divine abandonment, a crucible of intellect and repository of the godkin's pilfered truths. Yet in the south, the Nubians thrived, untouched by the sea people's swelling tide. They grew strong and self-reliant in the shadow of the godkin's obfuscation, their culture untainted, their legacy unclaimed by the voracious hands of interlopers. The Nubians regarded the skies with wariness and the seas with prudence, but built their might firmly upon the terrestrial and the tangible. Thus, humanity poised on the brink of metamorphosis, much like the silvery chrysalis hidden within its cocoon, yearning for the moment of unfurling wings. And in the hearts of all, whether god, kin, sea people, viking or Nubian, the whispered promise of Anunnaki's devices paired with Syrian's artifice, a legacy both terrible and awe-inspiring, thrummed with the potential to cast the world anew. Part 3. Visitation and the Emergence The scorching sands of South Africa's coast find themselves kissed by foreign souls. The sea people, clad in gilded armor and brandishing weapons etched with lost glyphs, striding ashore with the inexorable certainty of a prophesied event. Their arrival snaps a millennium of silence left in the wake of the Anunnaki's exodus. The Syrians, those celestial custodians, no longer breathe their guidance over humankind's plight. Amongst the curious and wide-eyed natives, one stands apart, a solitary figure, with eyes mirroring the azure realm above. His gaze, a sapphire anomaly amidst the umber and sienna of his kin, meets the cold metal of the sea people's devotions. The unspoken question of his lineage dances upon the hushed lips of the gathering crowd. Tension rustles through the native throng as eyes as old as the sky lock with the sea people's steely resolve. The very air hums heavy with the scent of potentiality and the ancient electricity of the cosmos. Then from the abyssal depths, a presence that stirs the souls of those assembled, a beautiful and alien entity emerges. Cresting the waves and bathed in the sun's faltering caress, she beckons, a mermaid, her scales shimmering with myth and memory. Her beauty is a cruel dagger to the heart of chaos, a reminder of what was once held between sea foam and stardust. A lineage undisrupted by terrestrial shackles. The natives murmur, captivated by this mythical vision, as the babe of the brine unfurls her tail to ears deaf to her tongue, but hearts attuned to her song. The Vikings, emissaries of the fathomless, merely tighten their grip upon their vessel's contents, a sack of mystery. And with but a fleeting gaze towards the seraphic siren, they slip away enigmatic as the mist that clings to the mountains. And so the story weaves itself into a tapestry of secrets as we ponder the narratives within Alexandria's hallowed halls. To truly comprehend the unfolding drama, one must plunge into the depths of the untold and swim through the ink of the ancients, a venture as daunting as the unyielding sea that brought forth the sea people and, with them, a chapter left unfinished in the breaths between worlds. Now we leave off with uncertainty. Visit the Library of the Untold for the rest of this tale as it ties into more than just fiction. Yeah. 
Yeah.